Good morning, survival family. Today's topic, I want to talk about something that will kill you faster than starvation in SHTF. We're looking a little rough this morning. I know you guys don't really care about that, but just had to point that out there. Um, this guy is teething right now and he's not wanting to sleep so mama's not sleeping either <laughs> I have a lot of new subscribers on here and so I don't think a lot of you know that I used to be in law enforcement I was in law enforcement for <laughs> almost five years and I did several different jobs in um, law enforcement but the longest stint that I did was in corrections um, so I worked at two different jails in Indiana and I loved it. I honestly would still be doing it if this guy hadn't come along. Um, when we knew we wanted to start a family, I jumped out of it because it's just, it's honestly the hardest, not hardest, obviously like the military and stuff, but like one of the hardest careers you could pick um, if you have a family. But there's so much overturn. I mean, we would probably lose, I don't know, at least one officer every couple months and... <coughs> Um, at one point we had like five officers walk out um, and that's because at the two jails I worked at <laughs> your I guess attitude towards the job your um, experience with the job it would depend on two things it would depend on your co-workers <laughs> and it would depend on your bosses excuse you excuse you now you might be saying duh but it's different in law enforcement because your life is on the line. And if you aren't getting along with your coworkers or if you don't trust your coworkers, you might not be going home at the end of the day um, because th that's who has your back. That's your backup. If you're in trouble, if you're getting the crap beat out of you or you're getting, you know, jumped or what, who, who knows what, um, and that person doesn't like you or that person isn't the best officer that's all you have that's that is who is coming to help you so it's very different in law enforcement because you're you're literally putting your life in your boss's hands and in your co-workers hands i have seen the coolest things come out of our shift um when we have like our favorite supervisors so some of those guys are the best. They're the first ones in the door and the first ones out of the door. That's not the case for all of them. And but the, the good ones who actually care about their shift, who actually care about who they're in charge of, um, they made they made it. <laughs> and, and we were happy. And even though sometimes it sucked, some of the things the inmates did, you know at the end of the day your supervisor had your back. And it just made shift run I can think of one instance where it had the opposite um, and we had some really crappy bosses. Unfortunately, the good ones got, um, you know, promoted, which is great, fantastic for them. Less hours, more pay, um, less dangerous. They weren't like actually in the jail, you know. So we were really happy for them. But the only qualified guys that were there were really lazy and um, just weren't team players. And they just wanted to sit at the desk and wear you know the extra badge that they got with that title but they didn't really care about anyone on the shift <laughs> and this is actually the story that was my breaking point when i was trying to stay in and start a family <laughs> but this uh shift manager we were on a block doing a shakedown which means we go through every single inmate cell and turn it upside down basically looking for contraband looking for weapons that kind of thing um and this guy was very sexist. I'm not a feminist by any means, but he was very sexist. And so we knew that as the female officers and he let the male inmates get away with a lot more than what they should have. Um, so we always stuck together during these shakedowns because we knew we needed each other's back. So normally you would only have two officers per cell. We did three ladies per cell and this supervisor was yelling at us for it. And we just kind of were like, well, you don't ever back us up. So... This is why we're doing it. Um, and the particular cell we were searching, the inmate wasn't happy with things that we were taking and ended up coming into the cell with us. Now that is a big no-no for ob obvious reasons. <laughs> um, there's no cameras in the cells. Uh, and also we're a bunch of females. <laughs> and, and because he came in the cell, his two other bunk mates came in as well. Now, in a shakedown, they're supposed to stand against the far wall facing away from us so they can't see anything. Well, because 
this particular um, supervisor was on shift, he didn't enforce that and the inmates knew he didn't. So they felt like they could come into the cell and they got physical with us. They started pushing us. And so finally I left the cell. The other two females followed me out and the guy, the <laughs> supervisor had the audacity to yell at us and said, where are you going? We're not done up here. And I said, oh yes, I am. <laughs> and I walked off the block, turned in my two weeks the next day. It was literally the most um, unprotected I've ever felt in my entire life in, in law enforcement. I've been in some pretty bad fights. After I put in my two weeks, we actually had two male officers quit because of that situation because they were so tired of this leader. So our team fell apart. <laughs> Another negative side of the job was when we got officers in there who thought they were God and thought they could treat inmates a certain way because they were inmates. That's not the case. These people are still people at the end of the day. There was two particular female officers who just made the rest of our lives H-E double hockey stick. Like they would go on your block purposely to rile up the inmates and then you had to deal with them being mad. <laughs> who you choose to let in your circle, who you choose to let in your house if it was an SHTF situation, you need to trust them completely. You need to know when stuff goes sideways, they have your back. They're gonna keep their mouth shut. They're not gonna take extra food. They're gonna do their part in protecting the property line. It goes on and on and on and on and on. If you are the leader, or if you're allowing someone else to be the leader in an SHTF situation, you have a, a huge responsibility because everyone's lives is in your hands, especially in an emergency situation. And B, what you allow is what is going to happen. So if you allow people to not be accountable, if you allow people to take extra food when they're not supposed to, if you run out of food, it's gonna be on you. I don't think this is talked a lot about in the prepping community, and I, but I think it's important because like I said, I think this could kill you faster than starvation because if your crew goes rogue, if you have holes in your ship, you're going to sink. That's not a, a decision you make when it's happening. That's something that you need to be deciding right now. What are you going to allow on your property? Who are you going to allow on your property? What rules are you gonna put in place? If someone breaks those rules, how are you gonna handle it? That's something, <laughs> are you helping? That's something that you gotta think about right now. All right, this little guy is ready for a nap, so I'll be done off of my soapbox, but I wanna know what you think. Um, if you guys already have a plan for this, um, you know, comment all of that in the section down below and I will catch you all in the next video. Say bye. <laughs>